hello guys and welcome to another episode of my lecture on today's episode we are going to be talking about the judgment of reholand however i have divided the classes into segments in such a way that for each of the cases that were interrogated in this particular judgment we will see why those cases were enumerated by the court in the first place and what were the basis of the judgment we need to pay very apt attention to each of the judges and what the judge said in each of the cases do you understand so now i have a very comprehensive note and not just that i have the fact of the case as well if you want to read it yourself which i encourage everybody to do you need to read the fact of the case is in the resources below but then if you want to read the summary as well in my note i made the summary of the note as well however i will not be talking about everything in the note i would only be looking at the very important part of the note so let's go straight to what the court stated under the authorities guiding de facto directors under company law. The expression de facto director has been used for a long time, as Robert Walker observed in Ray K. Tech. But let us start with the first one, which was stated by Sir George Jewel M.R. In the case, in the case re canadian land reclaiming and colonizing co coventry and dixon's case i think just call it re canadian land because this case is quite it's quite lengthy so re canadian land now george mr what was the fact that was before him there were two directors who had been appointed and acted as directors while they were ineligible and the question was should they be regarded as directors or officers liable for summons of misfeasance now the court that sir george jessel said that the test which he applied was whether a man who has assumed a position could be allowed to deny in court that he was really entitled to occupy it now you know that in this case here those two individuals were appointed as directors however when they looked at their appointment several months after they realized that they were actually ineligible for appointment in the first instance and those people now wanted to deny that since we were ineligible for appointment we cannot be regarded as directors in such a way that we are going to have statutory duties and statutory liabilities of directors but the court test is when you have assumed a position and you have acted in that position and taking up certain responsibilities can you then be allowed to deny the court said no you can't be allowed to deny this case is what i call authority for 286 when you go to section 286 of our karma you will see that the karma tells us that where a person has been appointed as a director and later we find out that there was something wrong in that appointment all their act while they were acting as director will still be valid you cannot now say that they are no longer directors that is another species of de facto directors those who have been appointed but their appointment had problems now according to the court in this case anytime you see this bullet point i'm telling you what the judge in this case said the judge in this case said that but it is not easy to identify a simple and reliable test for determining whether a person in Mr. Holland's position was acting as a de facto director of a company whose sole director was a company of which he was a director de job. There are a number of first instance cases which offer some assistance, but I do not think that they provide a clear and simple solution to the problem as the fact which can give rise to it is so variable. So he's saying that we need to be very, very careful when we are applying certain tests in certain cases. We need to make sure that for us to apply the test in a particular case, the fact has to be similar. Because in this case, the, we cannot identify a simple and reliable test. Although his test was that he had already assumed position. Those two directors assumed position. So it is based on the fact that they assume position that they will not be allowed to deny. But in this case, can we say that Mr. Holland has assumed any position? In fact, we also need to recognize that Mr. Holland was acting on behalf of the paycheck director, which means that there was an interposition of paycheck directors between Mr. Holland and the subject company here, which is those composite company. So if you are looking at this re Canadian land and the test that was given, you cannot apply it to re Holland. 
because the facts are quite different do you understand then the court moved on and went to re low line electric motors limited and then the fact was that it was accepted that mr browning against whom the disqualification proceedings were brought and who had not actually been appointed a director de facto ran one of the companies which he allowed to trade after his retirement as director of the job knowing it to be insolvent now what is very important in this particular case is what nicholas brown wickinson said sir nicholas brown wickinson said that the intention of the parliament in section 300 was to have regards to the conduct of the person acting as a director i love this part whether validly appointed invalidly appointed or just assuming to act as a director without any appointment at all so he gave us three types validly appointed directors fall under section 269 subsection 1 the job directors also you read it in line with first leg of 268 now invalidly appointed directors fall under section 286 of our karma or just assuming to act as directors without any appointment at all falls under section 296 sub 2 and section 276 of our karma do you understand it's very important because you need to know that there are two legs for de facto for you to say a person is a de facto director you either prove that the person was appointed the job but there was problem in the appointments problem such that is either the appointment was not done in accordance with law or he was not eligible in the first place if that be the case then he's not a de jure director although appointed he is a de facto director and the second one is that he was not even appointed at all he just woke up one morning and started acting as a director in that case as well he is also a de facto director because the company saw him acting although the company did not appoint him and then the company left him to continue acting he is also a de jure director but now let's go to the asterisk the asterisk here which is what the court is stating about this case but he did not need to explore what was needed to determine whether an individual could properly be able to be acting de facto as a director of a company in the case such as this where a corporate director was interposed between him and the subject company and his actions could be attributed entirely to the position which he occupied the job as a director of the corporate director so what the court is saying here i appreciate the first case re canadian land i appreciate the second case re Lowell line electric motors limited but in each of these cases while paying attention to the fact they did not specifically give us a test that we are going to apply in a case where there is a company that is interposed between the director who is alleged to have been a de facto director and the subject company in this case here we have people who were not validly appointed yes when you are not validly appointed the law is clear that you are de facto or where you were not even appointed at all and you acted on behalf of the company yes sir nicholas wickinson told us that yes you are a de facto director but where there is an interposition of a corporate director which means that there is a company who is actually the director who you are acting on behalf of on the subject company's board if there is such interposition what test do you use to say that at this point he stopped acting as the the job director of that a composite director on the subject company's board and he started acting de facto as a director on that subject company's board as at what time do we say that that is the question that will likely answer in our next case of ray hydrodan Kobe limited where millet j gave us certain guidelines to look at gave us certain things in fact in rehydrodam the question was on shadow director and on de facto director so in our next case we learn more on who a shadow director is in these cases that we treated before this one we learned more on who a de facto director is especially the statement of nicholas uh, brown Nick wickelson in Ray low line electric motors in Rehydro Dam, we learn more on de facto and shadow directors. So I will see you in my next class.